circumcision. It is a subject most people don't talk about, or if they do, they joke about it. It's also something most people don't know as much about as they think they do. It is an operation we Americans casually perform on the great majority of our baby boys, even though there is no medical need for it. This is Robert Giberman of Laurel, Maryland. He's eight days old. And he's being comforted by his mom on a very important day in his young life. He's Jewish, and today he's going to be circumcised. Today is your big day, buddy. The ritual circumcision of male infants has been practiced by Jews for 4,000 years as one of the basic rites and symbols of allegiance to Judaism. It's a joyous occasion for family and friends because through the circumcision, the infant is initiated into the Hebrew faith. It is performed for religious reasons, not medical reasons. But in the United States, medical circumcisions also are performed routinely on about 85% of all male infants born each year. Last year, about one and a half million baby boys performed routinely, even though the prestigious American Academy of Pediatrics has declared there is no absolute medical indication for routine circumcision of the newborn, no medical reason at all. The United States is the only country in the world today in which this is done. Dr. William Gold of the Georgetown University School of Medicine describes it as elective surgery. There's, there's certainly no medical indication for the routine circumcision. It's uh, basically being done for parental preference. If most of the time, if the father has been circumcised, then he wants his son circumcised. It's, a, it's basically a cosmetic operation. I think the parents with uh, male children who, who elect to have circumcision think it looks better. I think there's still a very strong belief uh, among the parents that it's better for the child. Here are some of the instruments used to perform a circumcision. There are a lot of myths about the purported medical benefits of this operation, myths based on guesswork, old wives' tales, and an appalling lack of research and statistics. For the record, new medical evidence indicates that circumcision does not prevent penile cancer in males or cervical cancer in their wives. It has no effect on venereal disease, and it's not necessary for male personal hygiene. Plain old soap and water does the job just as well. The one man who probably knows more about circumcision than anybody else in the country lives in this New York City apartment house. The practice began about 1870 in the United States on a very small scale for the purpose of trying to prevent or cure masturbation, which was then believed to cause a wide array of diseases. Edward Wallerstein, not a doctor, a retired businessman, got interested in the subject, spent 12 years researching it, and wrote a widely respected book about it entitled Circumcision, an American Health Fallacy. Painful penal surgery without anesthesia. If the American practice is correct, why is it that this practice is rejected by France, England, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, England, Japan, and dozens and dozens of other countries. Today, many doctors are refusing to perform routine medical circumcisions. Most of these doctors inform parents-to-be of the option they have and then refer them to other doctors if the parents insist on the operation. Well, she didn't like me to touch it. Others, such as Dr. Paul Fleiss and Dr. Jay Gordon, who run a pediatric clinic in Los Angeles, actively counsel against it. My husband and I are at opposite ends with circumcision. Um, he would like the child to be circumcised. I would not like him to be circumcised. Can you tell me if there's any medical reasons that it should be done? There are no valid medical reasons for doing a circumcision today. And uh, babies have feelings. And you can learn to uh, care for your uh, little boy without having him circumcised. Um, how about the possible high risk of infection if you don't have circumcision? There's uh, no higher risk of infection. It's uh, really not necessary to pull out your teeth to stop them from being decayed, and it's not necessary to uh, cut off that very sensitive, delicate piece of uh, foreskin. What about advised consent? Do most OBs and pediatricians really inform 
parents to be adequately about all of this? A lot of babies are circumcised just routinely with no informed consent at all from parents. There's a, a brief explanation of the circumcision with very little explanation of the risks involved, uh, very little explanation of the possible benefits of non-circumcision. A lot of circumcision used to be performed right in the delivery room. Uh, that's no longer done commonly, but circumcision is commonly done on the first or second day of life without a lot of discussion with the parents, and they, they don't know uh, the risks. Oftentimes parents will say uh, they thought that the circumcision was an automatic procedure that was done in the hospital, and that they, they really didn't have any uh, choice in the matter. How dangerous is circumcision? There's a significant risk to, to uh, circumcision. A significant risk. According to one recent study, there is some sort of serious medical complication in one out of every 500 circumcisions. In other words, more than 2,800 serious complications in the one and one half million routine circumcisions performed last year. A couple of other little known facts recently discovered. In one study, as many as 50% of the women interviewed did not know if their husbands had been circumcised or not and 34% of the men interviewed didn't know either. In Atlanta, the circumcision rate is probably as high as in any other city, but Dr. David Grimes of the Emory University School of Medicine says it's a waste of money. My estimate is that in the United States, each year circumcision costs about 50 to 100 million dollars per year, which over a decade amounts to a substantial sum of money to trim Hundreds foreskins. Hundreds of millions. Well, we're talking about a half a billion dollars a decade to trim foreskins. And I gather you think that money could be put to better use medically. Exactly. If we took these thousands of personal hours and millions of dollars and applied them to other programs of demonstrated value, for example, immunization of children, vast benefits would accrue. A waste of money, and Dr. Grimes adds, painful to the baby. Anyone who's ever watched a circumcision can appreciate the fact that this indeed hurts the babies. Newborns are capable of feeling the pain and responding to it. It is a very loud, sharp cry that indeed means pain. A baby should be treated the same way you or, you or I would want to be treated if you were in their place. Uh, that does not mean being tied down, strapped to a board, and have part of your body cut off without an anesthesia. Opposition to routine medical circumcision is spreading rapidly throughout the nation. One of the country's most active opponents lives here, in this beautiful, unlikely spot, rural Washington State, near the city of Bellingham. Mrs. Rosemary Weiner is a childbirth instructor who concluded that the operation is painful and unnecessary only after her three sons had all been circumcised. Since then, her research and her writing on the subject have placed her in touch with hundreds of people, including many doctors. I began still basically neutral about it. I imagined that circumcision had a lot of benefits. This is what American middle class people have been led to believe, that it's supposedly it's cleaner and it's healthier. And I, so I was basically neutral. My only concern was that it was painful for the baby. As a result of the research that I've done, all the things I've found out, I've come out against it. Well, based on your experience from the mail you're getting, it would seem that many obstetricians and pediatricians are ignorant on this subject. Uh, absolutely. I think many of them think of it in terms of the foreskin as something that needs to be cut off, as if it came into the world cut on dotted line. In her childbirth instruction classes, Mrs. Weiner waits until the third or fourth session and then includes an information pamphlet on circumcision without saying a word about it. And she says at the next session she is always bombarded with questions. For a lot of people, it's become a routine, and you're handed a permission slip to sign when you go to the hospital, and it's done. Some people think it's nothing more than like cutting the umbilical cord and give it a little more concern, but it's time we do wake up and start thinking about what we're doing. This is the Philadelphia Children's Hospital, which is associated with the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine. The director of pediatric urology here is Dr. John Duckett who refuses to perform routine medical circumcisions on infants under his care. Dr. Duckett also says too many mothers do not know how to provide proper hygienic care for their uncircumcised baby boys. I would really like to get across the message to mothers that uh, choose to have their children uncircumcised, that they do not have to do anything to it. Uh, 
they wash the baby and they wash the child just like you do anybody else or any other parts of the body and you do not need to retract the foreskin and clean under it and really she should protect her baby from those uh, health care people that want to pull it back and uh, clean under it that's one of the big the hardest things to get across today because the doctors in the country are just not used to taking care of uncircumcised penises when American doctors decided that there was no medical reason to take tonsils out, they just simply stopped taking tonsils out routinely. Now American doctors say there is no need for routine circumcision. Why don't they just stop circumcising? The subject is so overladen with these overtones of social and cultural and, and sexual and religious factors that they are afraid to touch it. And uh, physicians will say, well, we'll be neutral. We'll let the parents decide. And that's a cop-out. A cop-out. That's a stern indictment. But if there is one thing our look at this subject proves, it is that doctors do not do a very good job of explaining the facts of circumcision to parents. We'll be back next week, and we hope you will be too. Good night for NBC Magazine.